Science are the minds of medicine. This is their story. Our heart beats nearly 100,000 times every day. And when it's pumping properly, it moves 2,000 gallons of blood through the body. But as we age, this amazing organ can pump inefficiently, affecting our ability to be active and risking our lives. I get short of breath and I get, uh, I get so I'm just too tired, I have to sit down. Just walking from A to B is, is become difficult. Mary Volker is an independent 86-year-old from East Lansing. A relatively healthy lifestyle has rewarded her with a long life. But now, a leaking and quickly failing replacement valve, along with a condition known as aortic stenosis, are putting Ms. Volker in the fight of her life. I had pneumonia and went into the hospital, and when I got out, I I found it very difficult just walking or doing anything. Am I okay with not having the right back? And this is when all this was diagnosed. Mary's cardiologist in Lansing recommended the one team that might be able to offer her a solution, the Center for Structural Heart Disease Program at Henry Ford Hospital. Ms. Wilker presents with a very unique and incredibly difficult problem to fix. She'd had previous heart surgery. She'd had a pig valve put in before. These are the biological valves that replace her old valve, and that was put in about 10 years before. When these pig valves start to degenerate, uh, they, they're like fragile, like eggshells, and they basically just start to fall apart. It's not like they don't open and close. They just don't work. Parts of the tissue actually can blow off and go out to the body and have a severe leak, and those people end up usually just having sudden death, and. Uh, she had literally less than six months to live. It was dramatic. It was very dramatic. She went from not using a walker, to needing a walker, to using a wheelchair, um, to having to basically practice walking again without a walker. I could either take care of it or just fade away. I chose to have it taken care of. Ms. Volker presents her physicians with a difficult problem and very little time. Because of her age and her deteriorating condition, she can't go through traditional open-heart surgery, and her defective valve won't improve on its own. With a problem this complex, Dr. O'Neill and his team needed an innovative solution. They found a replacement device that could work, only it wasn't designed for this valve or even for adults. I mean, that was a... It was a use, it was another thinking outside the box procedure. She didn't, there isn't a big enough aortic valve for her. I mean, that, that's why we went outside the box and said, let's put this one not typically used in that location. We knew that this valve was available in the U.S. for pediatric use, and it was a small valve because it's put in, in children and teenagers. And uh, it's really a, a unique shape. The, the valve itself is actually just uh, marvelous. We realized that the same size could fit to her, and so then that's when we started the process of trying to discuss with, uh, with Medtronic and with the FDA to get us permission. After requesting permission from the manufacturer to use the device for a compassionate use, the team must wait for the manufacturer and the hospital's internal review board to approve the procedure. To make sure the device is completely safe for Ms. Volker, this step took months of waiting. Now, with little time left, and a deteriorating condition, she meets with Dr. O'Neill and his team. She was getting worse and her valve was getting worse and that was the hurry because when we first met her, she was only mildly symptomatic, but kind of month by month she was degenerating. As the valve was deteriorating, she was getting more and more symptomatic. I think something was wrong with me if I weren't a little bit concerned, but uh, the alternatives are worse and I'll be 87 next month. I've had a long, good life. And so if this proves uh, lethal, well, it, so it is. And maybe they can learn from it and help the next person. But I don't expect that. Good afternoon. Hello. It's star of stage and screen. I am so. <laughs> so nice to, to see, see you. you. So what do you think? Ready to go? Yes. 
Okay, so just to kind of give you an understanding, uh, this valve is not usually used in adults, but your aorta is so small that the regular valves just wouldn't fit. I understand. Jump through a lot of hoops and everything. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we're finally, finally there. Her team will place a pediatric replacement pulmonary valve in place of her defective heart valve. And this will happen not in an operating room, but in a catheterization lab at Henry Ford Hospital. To perform a procedure no other hospital would take on, nearly two dozen different healthcare providers will participate, including cardiac surgeons, radiologists, cardiologists, nurses, and many others. They begin by placing a catheter in her artery, traveling up toward her heart. Each step must be carefully planned, and every team member must be in sync. And then measure right in the middle, kind of, between the two lines. Additional precautions are taken to prevent a stroke a primary risk of this procedure. The valve has to make a bend around the aorta, so it's got to come up from the leg and make a bend around. The valve is much stiffer than the other valve we used, and my big worry was that it was going to be too stiff to come around the aorta. So the sequence of events is going to be hold ventilation, pacer on, carotid occlusion, I'm going to inflate, inner balloon, then outer balloon. When I'm fully done and ready, I'm gonna hit both of these to deflate. And then you're still holding carotid at this point. We'll say pacer off. Once pacer is off, then you can release carotid and then resume ventilation. To get the valve, the new valve inside the old one to get it in the right location was, was a little dicey and she did deteriorate. She got very unstable when we put the new valve in and we had to kind of rush to get the new valve implanted. Can you take a look and see where the where the valve is sitting in terms of the mitral valve? You know, sometimes people overuse the term life and death, but in her case, unequivocally, it was life and death. Once they get the replacement valve near the old valve, there we go. There we go. they force the heart to stop pumping and open it in place. Miss the proper positioning and Miss Volker could die. Let go, back up, back up pacer. resume backup pacer to 80, and resume ventilation. There we go. And now let's work on pressure here. 20 for 30 is ready. So look how low we It's a success. Now Dr. O'Neill goes to talk with the family. Excellent, excellent, excellent. It went very, very well. She tolerated everything. Um, the new valve is sitting perfectly in place. It was a little tricky to get into the old one because it was all maddled and jumbled up, but we got across it very well. The new valve is sitting in a perfect position. There's absolutely no leak, and um, there's no obstruction now, so the thing is basically like a normal valve. I'm thrilled. You know, I'm, I'm very happy that it's gone well, and certainly it's still high risk. I mean, there's the potential of stroke, they gotta get her till tomorrow, and then you take each day. But if he's thinking that she can leave the hospital on Saturday, that's, you know, eight days earlier than we were expecting. Only weeks after surgery, Mary Volker is back home. Her life was saved thanks to an innovative approach and a team that refused to take no for an answer. I wouldn't be here without this procedure, I'm quite sure. Or if I were, I would be in terrible shape and not, unable to do much. I have perceived the work in medical research as being oriented toward improving the quality of life for people. I presume that that's what this is all about. When I get the chance to see Dr. O'Neill or anybody else on the team, I will be happy to have the opportunity to say thank you you did a great job.